Hello, cinefans. I'm Kendall Krufer, and this is Watching Classic Movies. My guest is Dorothy Schultz, curator of the James Dean Museum in Fairmount, Indiana. We had a great talk about this thriving tribute to an actor who burned bright in a short life and left a lasting legacy. The museum is home to the largest collection of Dean artifacts and attracts visitors from around the world. It is also deeply loved by the surrounding community, which includes Dean's family. Dorothy shared stories about the museum and the annual festival it hosts, tips about how to make the most of a visit, and what Dean means to her as an artist and influential figure. Welcome, Dorothy. Thank you for joining me today. Oh, thank you. My first question for you is, what do you love about James Dean? Wow. Well, it's hard to really, to really pinpoint, but I guess, you know, if I, if I had to say it would be that he um, was a true artist and there's nothing I admire more about a person than if they're really devoted to, to their craft. And, and he, and he was, and just, um, he was just fearless um, you know, you have a farm boy from Indiana who goes out and, you know, conquers Hollywood uh, in, a, in a few short years. I mean, that's just unheard of. Um, and I think that's what I admire and respect most about, about him. Well, I know there unfortunately isn't a lot to draw from, but do you have some favorite James Dean performances that kind of speak to that quality? Yeah, um, I really love his television performances. Um, you know, he, he appeared in over uh, 30 episodes of TV. And, you know, back then, um, television was live. So watching him um, perform, you really get a, a true sense of his absolute genius and his um, improvisational skills and his ability to work off, um, work off people, and also like inanimate objects as a method actor. But so much of his acting was, was intuitive. So in the Dark Dark Hours, for instance, which might be my favorite performance of his, and he's acting against, um, or alongside, I should say, Ronald Reagan, which is hysterical because, you know, Reagan, he's so stiff, so wooden, <laughs> and Jimmy's just all, you know, Jimmy's just, he's yeah. like a, a kid in a candy store. He's just all over the screen. I mean, he's, he's dancing, he's smoking a cigarette. He's, um, you know, he just, he just takes over yeah. and you, you just, you you can't watch anyone else when he's on screen. It doesn't matter who he's with. And um, so I would say his television television performances. Um, as for you know his movies, he, as we know, only starred in in three movies: so East of Eden, Rebel Without a Cause, and Giant. Um, I would have to say that you know, it, of course, it's hard to say, but I would have to say that um, East of Eden is my favorite of his performances, mainly because. His cousin, uh, Marcus Jr., who he was raised with and who still lives in the farmhouse and is still um, deeply involved in the museum, um, has said that, you know, Jimmy as Cal Trask in East of Eden, it's, it's really just Jimmy on the screen. It's the closest to how, how Jimmy actually was um, as a person. And I just, I love knowing that. So it makes me enjoy the performance that much more yeah that's really moving so yeah. what what brought you to your position as curator at the museum well um it's a very long story <laughs> um I would so as an eight-year-old girl uh, my mother she worked at the time as a librarian and um if my brother and sister and I were really good which we often were, um, you could rent a movie from the library for a dollar. And it was my turn, you know, to be able to rent because I was really good. And um, so I was looking at the movies and my mother, she's 
she's somewhat of a film buff. So she, you know, Turner Classics is always on. Uh, she's probably watching it right now. <laughs> and she suggested, well, why don't, why don't we get, um, why don't we get this one? And it was Rebel Without a Cause because as a little girl, um, I really looked, I, I could have been Natalie Wood's double as a little girl. Unfortunately, not as much now, <laughs> but, <laughs> but as a little girl, like it's, the resemblance was uncanny so much so that um, my family, my nickname was always Nat growing up and it still is with, with, with my mother. And I remember we went home and, you know, she put it in and I was just, transfixed um I I I don't really know why but I just um became obsessed with the movie I would watch it every day I would act out scenes um you know and of course it was always me as Natalie (laughs) with Jimmy so it started somewhat on you know as a childish kind of imagining you know and as a child I was always doing things like that um you know putting on skits and writing little poems and things like that and drawing so it was very natural but then as I grew older you know for my birthday or for Christmas I always get something James Dean related and um you know I got to know him more and then I started reading everything I could about him and then um got just kept getting deeper and deeper into it um and just um became somewhat I I don't like the word obsessed um because it makes it seem like you don't really have a grasp on reality (laughs) but um I just became immersed in just uh his life the drama of his life um who he truly was as a person and as an artist and how he really he really changed um, America in a way, you know. Dennis Hopper says, you know, um, Marlon Brando changed the way people acted. James Dean changed the way people lived. And I think that's absolutely true. Yeah, we're so used to the influence. I think that we're not aware of how profound it was. I mean, just even just the concept of a teenager and the feelings that someone that age as you know and that he was embodying in those roles was a little novel at the time I felt yeah yeah so you've had some changes at the museum fairly recently I I I hear you officially changed the name to the James Dean Museum yes yes so um we decided to do that about well it's been almost um like a year and a half ago almost two years and um, that really came about um, just because people visiting, they're yeah. always referring to it as the James Dean Museum. And then, you know, the people that are always visiting the museum, 99% of them are visiting because they're avid James Dean fans. Right. And James Dean fans are, are interesting because, because of their devotion. Um, they're not like regular fans. They're like all in, you know, and the museum, um, for those that don't know, um, we have the Winslow family's personal collection of um, James Dean's belongings. So we have more of Jimmy's actual belongings than anywhere on earth. So we have, for instance, his first motorcycle, his, his 125 CC um, 1947, Czech motorcycle and then we have his 1955 Triumph TR5 Trophy 500 cc motorcycle we have his baby clothes we have um, movie props like the monkey from Rebel Without a Cause we have his his motorcycle jacket his leather jacket we have his boots from giant his script from giant we have his script from see the jaguar which is so you know incredibly rare yeah we even have his yeah we even have his script from hill number one which was his first credited television role with his notes all over it i mean it's unbelievable we have his you know toys 
as a child, his his own artwork, because Jimmy himself, as I was saying earlier, was such an artist. So for him, it was so important to always be creating. And so we have a lot, he loved watercoloring. Um, so we have a lot of his watercolors on display. We have his self sculpture, which was made famous um, from the James Dean story, the Robert Altman documentary, the 1957 documentary. We have that self sculpture, which was oil based clay, so it's still malleable. We have that on display. We have his last sculpture that he was doing under the tutelage of Pago Waring in California. We have his racing suit that he was racing in in his races in Palm Springs. Bakersfield and Santa Barbara. We have his racing trophies. Um, we have his Oscar nominations from the Academy. Uh, I mean, that's <laughs> we have like impressive. it's it's. I mean, every day, you know, I get goosebumps. Still, we have. Oh, how could I forget this? We have his matador cape and horns. You know, Jimmy, he was so passionate about bullfighting. From the, uh, the, the the picture with the yes, horns? From of, the, yes, is it the from the Roy Shat photo. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, and, you know, he he loved those. And those supposedly had belonged to Sidney Franklin, who was a Brooklyn-based matador. And a director had given them to Jimmy on one of his visits um, to Tijuana, I believe. And, you know, even his his conga drums and bongos. So we have the conga drum made famous um, besides the Dennis Stock photos, but also made famous because um, the singer Morrissey uh, used that conga drum in his suede head music video when they when he came here in, I think it was 88 for that. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, those those drums are either famous or infamous, depending on whether you were. <laughs> I think yeah, he was quite right. the guy at the parties with his with his drums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love those. Um, fans will know them, but there's somewhat rare photos of Jimmy where he has the conga strapped on his back and he's walking in, in New York, um, in New York City. Well, no, you're you still get an emotional reaction to this. So I'm just wondering, you're talking about how devoted James Dean fans, how do people react to seeing these items? Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's, it runs the gambit, you know? So we have some people that come in that are just, um, they love the fifties. So it's not so much James Dean, but majority of people, you know, you, you never know, like, um, this is a few months ago, but it's, it's stuck with me. And it was an older man. He was probably in his, in his sixties or seventies. And, um, you know, I was giving him a tour of the museum and, you know, it was going, it was going fine. Like he was interested. He had, he had seen all of the movies and had been a fan for most of his life. And then we got to um, the last, the last room and um, it, it was the giant, one of our giant displays and there's a Marlin 22 caliber 32 um, a rifle that Jimmy had used in Marfa, Texas to shoot jackrabbits. So I just like point to the rifle and he bursts into tears and I was like, oh my goodness, I was so taken aback. I, I was just kind of frozen because I like, didn't understand what was happening. And I was like, oh, are you all right? And he said, oh, he said, I had that same gun as, as a boy. And he was just so touched to see, you know, that Jimmy had it, had it as well. But then, you know, we'll have people like come in and they'll just, when you first open the door, one of the first things you'll see is Jimmy's first motorcycle, the Czech motorcycle. And people, this has happened more than once and it always makes me laugh because it's just so great they'll open the door and they'll just scream. They'll just be like, the motorcycle! <laughs> and, um, and then other people will be more, it'll be more like a quiet, like I can tell they're getting a little bit choked up. Um, like if I'm talking about Jimmy's mom, Mildred, um, sometimes people will get a little bit choked up, I think, just because people, you know, Jimmy himself was so interesting and just so complex and so multifaceted that people of all ages and from all different walks of life relate to him. So I never know 
until you know I get to really talking to them like what's what's really going to hit them most you know that's right there's so much to draw from yeah because he did seem at heart to remain who he was and yet he had this glamorous career so there's so many experiences one could you know look at and I imagine you must have people from all over the world as well yeah all all over so he's huge in Japan um so we get a lot of um Japanese people in and somewhere it's their first time in America and they're choosing to come to Fairmount which is incredible you know and and then um a lot of people from you know California um this morning there were people from Texas um New York I mean you just you never know um and that that makes it really exciting and then it's also you know very touching um to to witness that to see that Jimmy's um is still affecting people so, so strongly yeah the whole the whole world comes to you comes to this museum how can people make the most of their experience at this museum like what what what's the best way to approach it i think um well i think it would be good if people um there are some, you know, really wonderful books on James Dean. Um, if they've read those beforehand, even mm. if it's just, even if it's just The Mutant King by David Dalton or um, James Dean by Val Holly or even um, Jimmy and Me by Lou Bracker, which is just a touching book about his friendship with Jimmy um, at the end of Jimmy's life. But just so they have like a base to go off of if they aren't like a, a lifelong fan you know yeah, yeah or yeah, even just true. to watch the three movies beforehand so they so they understand when they see Jimmy's lasso from giant like how significant and how symbolic that item is yeah oh though that makes sense to see it all in action and I do want to note before I go into other activities around the museum that there is also uh, an exhibit about Jim Davis the creator of Garfield Yes, there is, because bizarrely enough, <laughs> our um, Jim Davis was also raised in Fairmount, um, just like James Dean. And a lot of people um, assume that he's from Muncie because he did attend Ball State, um, just like David Letterman. Um, but no, he was he was raised raised here in Fairmount. I, I so we do that. get we do get Garfield fans coming in and then. You know, I'll show them our Garfield display, and then I'll, of course, always make them do the James Dean tour. <laughs> yeah, since you're here, <laughs> so and then we'll end up getting like a lot of James Dean Garfield fans out there. <laughs> I mean, it it did amuse me because those are two things from when I was young that I loved, like really loved. Yeah. So to see yeah. them together, they're not so opposite to me as it might appear. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And no, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. So there are other things, though. That now is this put on by the museum, the um, the festival? Yes. So we we've, yes. we've been sponsoring this the festival since 1975. Wow. Um. So we have a museum board where all year we are basically planning this festival. Um. Tonight, actually, at seven o'clock, we have a meeting about about the festival. So the festival, we have a huge car show. It's over fifteen hundred hundred cars oh my god um, we have yeah wow. and we have one area it's really neat it's called mercury row and it's all old mercs because you know um in rebel without a cause jimmy's car was a 49 mercury um and we have a parade that goes right down washington street um which is historic because that's the street jimmy would always take um to go to to high school um on Vine Street, you'd have to take a ride on Vine, um, and it's also the the same street um, where the bank, the famous bank photo of Jimmy walking in front of the bank by Dennis Stock was taken on his last visit home in February of '55. And then we have you know vendors everywhere. There's a carnival. We have a '50s dance contest, and then we have our um, our famous James Dean lookalike contest which is, which is always a hoot. <laughs> and contestants get really into it. Actually, um, there's one contestant, he's won two years in a row now. Oh. And last, yeah, last year, he even, he found a vintage 
vintage pea coat that's very similar to the one Jimmy wore. And he actually made a replica of Jimmy's conga just for this contest. So yeah, it's just so, it's just so great. Um, in the past, we've had contestants, um, you know, dress up as Jet Rink and one, he um, even like had molasses all over him, just like Jimmy to look like oil, like he had just struck oil. Oh, <laughs> That's so. great. But I mean, I don't know how comfortable that would be. <laughs> That's <devoted. laughs> I know, I know. So is there, is the, I'm just curious about the parade. Is there anything specifically James Dean about it? Like, do people... I'm trying to visualize what that is, or is it just a yeah, kind of yeah? So the parade is more like what you'd it's like an um what you'd expect from a small town parade. Like it's just it's very charming. So you know you have like Boy Scout Girl Scout groups marching, and then um you know a baseball team, and then you'll have like a float from one of the class classes that graduated from Fairmount High School, and you know the band playing and. Um, a lot of fans really love coming here because they feel like it's a step back in time um, because Fairmount has made it a mission to kind of keep things um, preserved, which is, you know, in this day and age, that's that's kind of unheard, unheard of. Um, so a lot of the spots, you know, Jimmy frequented in town, you know, still exist fans love it because they feel like they can walk where Jimmy walked and, you know, feel like they can really understand where he was coming from. And I was wondering about that as well. What, what kind of are the, the great spots to go see around town that are related to, to James Dean? Yeah. So unfortunately we couldn't, we couldn't um, raise the funds to save the high school, um, but we did save uh, the stage that Jimmy performed on and that's out at Play Acres Park. So that's one thing that's really amazing to see. And it's the James Dean Memorial stage. And during the festival, we have um, rockabilly bands playing on, on that stage. So it's amazing to get up on that stage and feel like, oh my goodness, I'm standing where Jimmy was Frankenstein's monster in Goon with the Wind. You yeah. know, I mean, yeah. it's, it's just unbelievable. And, you know, there's... Um, um, there's Payne's Garage where Jimmy used to park his Czech motorcycle before going to the high school so his friends wouldn't mess with it. <laughs> and there's there's Carter's Motorcycle Shop where Jimmy got his first motorcycle and where he hung out almost every day of his life. That was run by Marvin and Mildred Carter, and that's still there. And now it's the Marion Ninth Street Gang. It's their car headquarters. That, you know, fans can see that. And then, of course, you know, there's Back Creek Church where Jimmy did his first acting as a boy because his aunt was part of the Women's Christian Temperance Union. So she'd have Jimmy doing speeches on like the evils of alcoholism. And so that's that, you know, that's important because that's really where Jimmy did his first acting ever. Right next to that, you have um, the Winslow Farm, which is just it, I mean, it's, it will take your breath away. It's unbelievable. It's just, it's a beautiful white farmhouse, two ponds on either side. You know, there's horses outside. Um, there's like cows grazing. I mean, it's, um, it's just remarkable and just pit picturesque to see. And then sadly, but you know, you can pay your respects to Jimmy at um, Park Cemetery where he's buried and you know fans leave all kinds of things for Jimmy there there's always lipstick marks on his headstone and cigarettes people leave letters to him uh, um, little trinkets things that you know are really dear to them they'll leave um, like guitar picks um, all kinds all kinds of things and then in Marion there's Jimmy's birthplace so the the house where he was born, the House of Seven Gables um, apartment houses isn't there, but there's a nice memorial for him, for him there. You know, fans can visit that. And then in also in Marion, there's um, the cemetery where his mother is buried, and some fans like to visit 
her as well because she she never gets enough credit. She was really, you know, instrumental in Jimmy's life, and you know, her death, of course, is something he never recovered from. Um, and how how could he? But she was the first to really instill that love of the arts in him. You know, supposedly his middle name was Byron because her favorite poet was Lord Byron. Uh, she loved poetry. She had the gift of mimicry like Jimmy. And, um, you know, Jimmy is recorded in that little secret recording he did on his last visit home. And we have the recorder on display that he used. And he's asking his grandparents, you know, where did I get my artistic talent? And they talk about his grandfather, Cal. Cal Dean, who was an auctioneer, and you know, there's that famous stock photo of Jimmy in front of the Cal headstone. Um, but I always think to myself, like, well, why didn't why didn't they mention Mildred? Because I think I think he probably got a lot of his his talent from her as well. I wonder um, if they just didn't see her in that role because the way you were talking, I thought, well, she probably could have been an actress. It sounds like it sounds like she had the talent yeah. for that. Yeah. Yeah. I think they were probably just thinking of, yeah, maybe there's their side of the family, which I'm sure he got some of it from Cal, who was the auctioneer. But yeah, Jimmy's mother just isn't um, discussed enough, I don't think, <laughs> personally. Yeah. I, I mean, I always feel like it is at the core of his story. It, it drove him a lot. It, he de yeah. it developed him on one side and then it kind of affected him on the other side of it, really. Now, right. it, so you were talking about the Winslow family. They're still involved with the museum? Yes. Um, so Marcus, who um, was uh, Marcus Sr. and Oratan's their son. So when he was born, you know, Jimmy was already living on the farm. So even though technically they're cousins, to him, Jimmy was always there. He was just like an older brother. And the amazing thing is, you know, he still lives in the farmhouse where he was raised um, with Jimmy. And he's still, you know, very much involved in the museum. And his eldest son, Coy, is on the is on the museum board. Um, so, you know, they're just incredible people, just um, such dear, just kind people who who really um, sincerely care about continuing Jimmy's legacy and keeping it going for for fans and we're just so lucky that they've invested so much time and energy into the museum. I mean that's lovely to hear. I, it explains to some degree the longevity of the museum that just so many people are invested in it, the community, you know, his family. Yeah. And then of course there's the fan support of, as well. I do right. want to point out I, I was looking at the website and if people want to connect with the museum and aren't able to visit, there is a pretty fantastic gift shop on there. I mean, so oh, many yeah. t-shirts just to start. I couldn't yeah. believe it. I'm like, okay, somebody will find something they want to hear. And I also, I just said it was interesting that you were talking about your resemblance to Judy in um, Rebel of the Cause because that was one of the most fascinating items to me on the site was there's a compact, like her compact. Uh, yes, yeah. So we decided to make a replica of, of her compact, you know, that she leaves in the police station during Rebels Out of Cause and Jimmy or Jim Stark picks up and then, you know, later gives to her and it's like, do you want to see a monkey? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we try to, we try to have things um, for sale for like the really serious fans where they would see the compact and be like, I have to have this. Yeah. And then you know, and then fans that just are like, oh, you know, I would like a t-shirt with Jimmy's face on it. No, the, um, the array is there. It, it is it is present. And I was impressed. So before I let you go, is there anything else that you need our listeners and prospective travelers to know about the James Dean Museum? Um, Yes. So we are going to be um, moving locations to be on Fairmount's Main Street in a big gray building, which used to be a Ben Franklin store. So Jimmy, you know, would go in that a lot growing up in, in Fairmount. And the Winslow family is going to be giving us even more things to display. And I can't say at the moment, like what those things are, but 
I, I mean, it's so, in, it's so incredible that when I first heard what things they're thinking of giving us to display, I burst into tears. Oh, wow. So um, fans are just going to, they, they just won't believe it. And we're hoping um, to be in that new, new location before our festival in 2024. Okay, so um, coming up fairly soon. Yeah, and so um, I would say just for fans um, right now, they can follow us on Instagram. Um, we post every day, you know, with visitors to the museum and also, you know, photos of Jimmy and just um, facts that we find interesting. Um, and that our festival this year is going to be September 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. And that if they're interested in visiting, um, they should look into getting hotels or accommodations as soon as possible. Oh, I bet everything fills up. Yeah, I've heard it's yeah. so popular. Yeah. Well, it's been wonderful to talk to you about this museum. Like I said, I this was the first kind of museum with a tribute like this. museum including a link to the delightful instagram account thank you for listening this is kendall kruver watching classic movies until next time